folks, I'm One Prop Bavarian, and today I want to bring you with me into a time period of uncertainty, chaos, and mistrust. The Fallen Eagle, the Dawn of the Dark Ages, is a well-crafted mod that was released quite a while ago and attempts to capture the centuries before the official CK3 start dates. Let's examine what it looks like, what is going on within it, and why you might be interested in playing it even right now. The Migration Period is one of the areas in history that has barely any representation in grand strategy games as it is more than difficult to model. There have been various games and mods in the past that attempted to model it, but ultimately it is an often overlooked period. The Fallen Eagle is a mod that is out on the Steam Workshop right now and throws you into the year 395. Now, I will tell you that this mod has an outstanding framework. The underlying design philosophy is apparent both in the mod's visual representation as well as the implemented world. The mod is very much unfinished, which is something that should be expected from a large total conversion mod such as this one, but I will say that I think it is not just playable but absolutely worthy of your time. If you want to give any feedback, make sure to join the team's Discord, the link is, as always, in the description. The mod aims to introduce a total of 5 bookmarks, but currently only 395 is implemented and that is where the focus will lie for the time being as well. In the year 395, Emperor Theodosius' two sons rule over the western and Roman half of the empire respectively. Their father, Theodosius, is commonly understood to have been the last emperor to have control over both halves of the empire, and the young rulers will face tremendous struggle and trouble during their reigns. For one, we have Alaric, king of the Visigoths. The Visigoths are not a new source of trouble for the Roman Empire as they had been pushing for more land and wealth for decades by now, but King Alaric is more ambitious than anyone before him. Alaric has recognized the weakness of the two child emperors and is making his way to claim land along the Adriatic coast, but if anybody knows history, then they will know that Alaric and the Visigoths would go on to sack Rome in the year 410. This would be the first sacking of Rome in 800 years back when Brennus and his Gauls pillaged the city. These dramatic events for the Romans are part of the larger process that would ultimately lead to the downfall of the Western Roman Empire. There were, of course, many more reasons, both internally and externally. And with that in mind, let's talk about these two babies that would play a massive role in what would occur in the next centuries. Their names are Attila and Bleda. They may not look like a threat right now, but believe me when I tell you that Attila, after ridding himself of Bleda, will play a vital role in what is to come. In 395, the first historically confirmed ruler of the Huns, Uldi, is attempting to push into the Carpathian Basin in the search for glory, riches and power. The Hunic expansion would be one of the major driving factors for what is to come. The Germanic tribes would cross the Rhine to find new lands and the Slavs would later on begin to settle the areas formerly inhabited by the Germanics. All of this, of course, would lead to the destruction of the Western Roman Empire as the Angles, Saxons and the Jutes invaded the eastern shores of Britannia. The Franks, Goths, Visigoths, Vandals and even the Huns themselves would then push far into the West Roman court to settle and find new lands to live in. Right now, this is not properly reflected in the mod itself, mind you, seeing as development of such a complex movement takes a lot of time. But the Germanic tribes are at the very least able to press into territory ripe for conquest by using the Varangian adventure Casus Belli. The modders are working on implementing further options on this topic, so it really is just a matter of time. The future of Rome hangs in the balance indeed. Now, after setting the historical stage, let's talk about some of the aspects the mod has to offer. Something that is quite hard to miss is the extensive UI work the team has done. The map itself feels totally different and not just on the paper map level. I will admit that it took me a while to get used to the stronger colors and borders on the paper map level, but the more I see it, the more it feels like a map inside of a history book. On top of that, the team has undertaken steps that let you truly experience the size of some cities in the world. As you can see, Constantinople, Rome and Alexandria all look quite impressive, especially compared to the fact that there is no city sprawl whatsoever in the vanilla game. On top of that, of course, the mod also offers a new general look for its coat of arms frames. It also has a completely different feeling to the UI as many of its symbols are altered to fit the theme of this time period. The entire UI is, of course, also recolored and while this, much like the paper map, felt quite alien to me initially, I want to encourage anybody that has doubts about it to play the mod as you quickly get used to it. The result of these large visual changes is primarily that you really lose the feeling of being in CK3 and instead it indeed feels as though you are in a more Roman-focused time period, which, well, you are. Now, nice visuals are of course not where the mods changes to the game end. The world was a different place in 395 compared to even 867, the earliest CK3 start date. All of the framework for this mod has been done by adding various flavors of paganism to the world where they belong and by unifying the Mediterranean Sea around the Nicene Creed, the core of the old Christian church that was established after the councils of Nicaea and Constantinople. Still, the church is not yet as established or old as it could be, making it so that Hellenism and Druidism are still rather common within various regions of the empire. The East Roman Empire actually even has various Hellenic rulers serving within the empire, possibly giving you an option for a run in which you revive the faith of the old gods. 
In the east, the Sassanids are a massive and powerful adversary to the Romans, possibly further intensifying the instability around the Christian Roman Empire. Additionally, of course, some of the Germanic barbarians refuse to accept the Nicene Creed and instead stick with Arianism, a heretic Christian faith that threatens to shake up the church's young order significantly. Culturally, the mod already has put a lot of thought into its setup, although things such as cultural innovations are not properly done yet. You can find various sub-Roman cultures throughout the empire, as well as some surviving and fairly untouched local cultures. The Germanic tribes are depicted in all their variety and flavor, and I cannot wait to see them migrate into the Western Roman Empire once this mechanic is fully established in the game. While this is not pertinent to the current state of the mod, I reckon that the addition of languages, cultural melting pots and divergences in the upcoming Royal Court expansion for CK3 will play a massive role within this mod. So let's summarize the current state of the mod. The team behind this project is clearly made up of dedicated and passionate individuals that are trying to capture the essence of the era both visually as well as mechanically. The next update for the mod will focus on the Celtic groups of the the map as well as various bug fixes. Personally, I sincerely hope that the later start dates the mod wants to integrate will wait and stand behind setting up the first start date entirely. If done right, the modders can set up their mod to become the project that utilizes the upcoming culture mechanics the best out of all projects as they are just so fundamentally important in this time period. The Saxons, Angles and Jutes arriving in Britain would lead to a true culture clash, which is of course something that also holds true for the invasions within the heartland of the continental Western Roman Empire. I recommend playing some of this mod even now already to gain some appreciation for the team's work and joining the Discord to be a part of the process. For the moment, this is all. I am excited to see where this mod will take it and I would like to thank the members of the channel, namely the Barons, the Counts and the Dukes. Thank you gorgeous people so so much. With all that being said, later, Alligator.